Everybody. Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, the wonderful, the talented, the Nicole Buchanan. <laughs> the Nicole Buchanan. The That's Nicole me. Buchanan. That's her. She brought me Reese's Pieces in okay. studio today because we're talking about a movie that I don't understand what you don't like. <laughs> E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Yes. Nicole, what you got against this movie? Uh, it, uh So much. But like, okay, here's the thing. I, I love this podcast. And I told you that like a long time ago, uh, because I didn't know if I would like it because I'm not, honestly, I'm bad at movies. Like I, my, like, uh, I have a lot of friends who are like really into it and they can be like, yeah, the way it's shot and this and this and this. And I'm like, I don't know shit about that. I know whether it like helps me escape reality or it doesn't. <laughs> and like, I I'll tell you, I like bad movies sometimes just That's because fine. it's like, uh, I like cheesy romantic comedies. I like things that just like help me get out of my head. Okay. Um, and like, but I'll tell and I loved this podcast because I listened to it and I didn't think I'd like it. But like any time because I don't know movies, I thought it was going to be like a pretentious movie podcast. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. And so like but anytime my friends make something, I'm like, I'm going to listen to it. And so I listened to it and I loved it because it wasn't a pretentious movie podcast. It's so fun to listen to. Oh, thank you. But here's a problem with being a guest on this podcast is if you hate a movie and then you have to talk about it, you have to rewatch it. <laughs> Like, I, I haven't watched that movie in so long because I don't like it. I think it's boring as fuck. Um, and uh, so then I had to try and rewatch it, and I just kept falling asleep. Oh, no. Um, oh, Nicole. Also, it's like the, the fucking, I don't know. There's something so creepy about that movie to me. Yeah? It, yeah, like, it just the, I don't know, like a kid keeping a... A, a little alien that looks like an ugly little penis, a secret from the adults. <laughs> it's a shroud of an alien. It's, it's very good. That's a, that, that alien is phallic. It's very phallic. And it, and it extends when it's happy. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. And until the just kid now. is like keeping it a secret from the adults. It's very creepy to me. All but, right. You know, maybe I just, that's just in my head. It's a Freudian thing. Well, before we get into uh, your possible uh, Freudian <laughs> misgivings about this movie, let's give everybody a, uh, for some reason, if you deserve a, fra- a refresher on E.T., I guess you didn't have a childhood or something. Yeah. Uh, it's a 1982 American science fiction film directed and co produced by Steven Spielberg. Uh, it tells the story of Elliot, a lonely boy who befriends an extraterrestrial dubbed E.T. who is stranded on Earth. Elliot and his siblings help E.T. return to his home planet while attempting to keep him hidden from their mother and the government. Um, it was an immediate blockbuster. It became the highest grossing film of all time until Jurassic Park. It's considered one of the greatest films ever made. Uh, it was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry, re-released a couple of different times, and uh, it was nominated for a fuck ton of Oscars, nine of them, including Best Picture. Um, <laughs> and that's the thing. And it, here's how here's how well received ET was. It lost Best Picture to Gandhi, and the director at the Oscars said, I was certain that not only E.T. would win, but that it should win. It was inventive, powerful, and wonderful. I make much more mundane movies. So. Wow. Wow. You are on the wrong side of history on this one, Nicole. It sounds like. Now I, uh, but I'm not going to just not sit here and listen to you because that would be very sad. So what was your, you watched this growing up, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the first time I saw it was as a a kid Mm -hmm. and like, I think also that plays into it is yeah, ET just creeped me out as a kid. I was um I was like a bitch kid. Like I yeah. was like a, a everything scared me. And so like that thing creeped me out, especially when it's sick and dying. Like everyone's like, Oh, it's so sad, I'm crying. I'm like, ew, kill it. It's gross. It looks gross. It does look real when they find when the when <laughs> Elliot's brother, what's his name? Mike? Yeah, Michael. When Mike the douchebag finds him out by the the woods. Sorry, if I'm – there's definitely going to be eating noise on this podcast <laughs> That's now, okay. They this brought Reese's Pieces. Uh, it's so on brought brand. to you by Reese's Pieces. Brought to you by Reese's Pieces. 
Which E.T. was also brought to you by. Yes. Um, anyway, so when they find E.T. out by that that river, that that gully where mm-hmm. he's just like there, sick and dying, Ugh. he looks – Gross. Gross. He looks so disgusting. Gross. And it's already a gross looking alien. Yeah. This alien is not cute. Yeah. I didn't say I had smart reasons for not liking E.T. <laughs> Plenty of people have people have dumb the the reasons we don't like things are I think probably pretty dumb to begin with anyway. Yeah. Like I absolutely one of my one of my least favorite movies of all time is Lawrence of Arabia. Mm-hmm. I hate that movie because it gets so much hype. And I think it is slow and boring. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind a few movies that are slow and boring. But if you're going to be a movie that's like, this is one of the greatest movies of all time. And there's almost nothing happens in the movie. And I want to just, I want to walk out of the theater where I have to be watching it for for class. Yeah. In college. Not a good movie. Well, I think some people pretend to like movies that are slow and boring because they just want to seem smart. Welcome to and, film school. Yeah. That's exactly what that's like. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I don't remember if I talked about this on an episode before already, but I rewatched when, when 2001 did uh, the re-release a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. I went and saw that again because I really liked 2001. And I watched it and I was like, oh, I don't like this movie as much as I used to. And I think part of me was kind of in that mode of like, this is a really, you know, capital G great movie. Yeah. But it's also very slow and boring. And there's a lot of really cool, innovative stuff that it does, but there are other better movies, A, made by Kubrick, and B, in this in the whole genre, that are way better to watch, and I think just better constructed as a whole. People want to seem very smart when it comes to movies. Yeah. I think it's because it's art, I guess. Yeah, and I used to try, I used to try really hard, because I feel like... Uh, like I date a lot of dudes who are super into movies. Oh yeah, and like uh, uh yeah, I was one to like like this maybe like four years ago. I did. I think he actually right now has a movie podcast. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, he was like super into it and stuff. And so I was like, I would try, but and and I think I did take in college like one kind of like film and I enjoyed it. Like I liked, uh, I love watching like, cause he, the, my, that professor picked out like good. Like there were a lot of like, um, who's that guy that the, the guy that did taxi taxi or taxi driver, which one's not taxi the comedy with, not, one, not with Jimmy Fallon and Queen Latifah. No, not that one. <laughs> You mean ta- Martin Scorsese? Yes. Yeah. Or Taxi Driver. That guy. See, I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> the, you, but you have me on this podcast. But I, uh, <laughs> I, I liked him, and he was. I love like Quentin Tarantino. I love like uh, those. But um, yeah, anything like slow and fucking like if he would have showed it. He even said my professor. I remember him saying like, I know Citizen Kane is like one of those movies that you're supposed to show in these classes. He was like, I don't like it. <laughs> He was like, yeah. it's slow and boring, and I don't get why everyone loves it so much. I mean, what are some of your all-time favorite movies? Um, I mean, I do like some of the like big like classics. I, I don't know. A lot of people don't like this movie. I love Goodwill Hunting. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I think I've, have you said that you don't like that movie before? No, I just, I think it's okay. I don't think it's like a groundbreaking movie. I really like that movie. And I, I hate a lot of and like Speaking of like childhood nostalgic movies, I think I hate a lot of those. I'm not a big fan of uh, Goonies. Yeah, Goonies is totally okay. Goonies, yeah. Goonies is fine. Goonies is not like. But I feel like a oh. lot of people hold on to those movies because it is like nostalgic, mm-hmm. like those childhood like movies. I really do love a uh, Stand by Me. Though. Never seen it. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's one of my blind spots. I love that movie. That's one of my favorite movies for sure, and I. I didn't think I would because it's like a bunch of kids and I thought it would be like one of those like nostalgic movies. But I love I love that movie. I love My Girl, the one where the kid gets stung by a bunch of bees. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this movie. I think it's actually what? been covered on this podcast before. Really? Yeah. And I don't know. Somebody's brought it up as another movie that they really liked. I am a person. I mean, I like movies of all kinds, but if I had to pick like my favorites are always movies that are really quick or at least fast paced, even if they're long. Mm hmm. Um, and there's uh, like big bombastic set pieces. Like one of my favorites, uh, that is sort of in that trend is, um, what's the, what's the name for it? Uh, there will be blood, Mm -hmm. you know, there's definitely very slow sections of that movie, but 
it follows a character who's very much a loose cannon as the main character. There's a lot of really big, bombastic set pieces, like when the oil derrick explodes. Um, other food favorite movies of mine, like Spring Breakers. Mm-hmm. You know, Spring Breakers is just trash. I've never seen screen. that. Uh, Spring Breakers is great. It's one of the greatest movies of, of all time. Because mm-hmm. it takes <laughs> – it shows all of the stuff that's like – that we are supposed to like as young people. Yeah. And it takes it with this distorted lens and is like, Oh, do you see how empty all of this is? Yeah. Cause I do. Oh, that would probably make me so sad. It's a very, um, it's a very jarring movie. Yeah. Cause that stuff, the, all the stuff, I hate all that stuff too. And I think it's very empty and sad and, uh, I don't know. Yeah. That would probably like, do you ever like leave a movie and it just kind of like affects you for a few days? Yeah. That's probably, I could see that being one of those. Well, that's me. kind of how, okay. So the thing, so I rewatched ET back mm-hmm. to ET. I rewatched ET to cover this because I hadn't again also seen it since I was a kid. Yeah. And I remember I don't remember honestly how I felt about it as a kid. I remember watching it and I was like, we're, we're, okay, what's next? Quest for Camelot? Like, this is fun. This is mm-hmm. fine. But it's not like, it didn't seem groundbreaking at the time. And then I remember reading all this stuff about it when I was in school probably and everybody's you know, loving it. And then I rewatched it yesterday and I was like, oh, I get it now. I see why all of the stuff, like that first sequence when he's running through the woods. Mm-hmm. And E.T. is making all of those sounds like there's I didn't like hearing those noises, partially yeah. because it's like weird alien noises. But also I felt sad because mm-hmm. he was getting left behind. Yeah, but he's gross. I leave him behind <laughs> too. <laughs> oh, also, can we talk about the part where and I I honestly like I read something online about this and I was like, yeah, why is that where the with it where they ask him to like wait for the pizza delivery guy and um. And then he tells him to get pepperoni and no, but they already ordered the pizza. Yeah, they already ordered the pizza. What the fuck? They're just waiting outside as if the pizza delivery guy has just a a bevy of pizzas in his car. There's a (laughs) lot of, everybody talks about how good Reese Witherspoon is in this movie. I will say this, Reese Witherspoon, you're five years old in this movie. How can anyone (laughs) classify you as a good actor or a bad actor? That's true. How, uh, How old do you think you have to be to actually be like... It, like a like a good actor. I you know it's hard to say because I I I've seen really good performances from young actors and actresses. Yeah. Like I Beast of the Southern Wilds got a really good performance from a young actor, and so does uh, Room. But this is very it's just so like run of the mill, and this is the movie that launched Drew Barrymore's career. Yeah. <laughs> How did she get so much? star attraction from this movie and nobody else in the movie does. I don't know. You know, this movie's got a lot of weird, like, sad parts. Maybe because she's a girl? Maybe. What happened? Okay, who played the mom in this movie? I'm looking at that up right now. I don't know. I actually love Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore, I mean, I think, I don't think Drew Barrymore's a bad actress. Speaking of movies that I love, The Wedding Singer is one of my favorite movies. Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler. (laughs) Old Adam Sandler movies are... Actually, like my heart and soul. I love them. I love them. I don't know what Happy Gilmore. I love them. Okay. So this movie is uh, uh, D. Wallace, played by Mary, who's who's the mom. Mm-hmm. That scene where they bring up – I didn't even remember there being like a divorce subplot in this movie when I was a kid. And there, okay, that's, a whole, that's a whole – element of this movie that's yeah it's what makes him so lonely and shit uh, yeah it makes so much sense yeah and i didn't even i did none of this stuff all this stuff went way the fuck over my head it did for me too yeah i just i was just creeped out by the alien i mean the alien is really really creepy yeah we can't deny that yeah anytime the alien makes a noise it's horrifying yeah (laughs) anytime the alien is like running around there's no there is legitimately no reason that the mom should have not figured out that it was not her daughter underneath that <laughs> yeah. sheet. Can you imagine what that alien probably smelled like? I'd be so offended if I was her <laughs> daughter. What? You, you're you buying this? They literally told Drew Barrymore to go and just like hang out by herself. Just like, all right, you're five. You can figure out how to get to this weird fence. <laughs> yeah. And not get kidnapped on Halloween. Can Spiked you do that? Up. We believe in you. We believe in you, Reese Witherspoon. The alien in this movie, okay, and once the stuff starts linking up with, once the alien and Elliot start, like, mind melding, mm-hmm. do you, does that add to the level of creepiness 
for you? Do you feel like that makes things worse? Yeah. I mean, fucking everything about it's fucking creepy. <laughs> Mostly just the penis shape. Um, <laughs> what? He, uh, I didn't think he looked that much like a penis. <laughs> well, how many? What? What kind of penises are you seeing? Uh, bad ones. Oh no, <laughs> a few good ones, but some bad ones. That is well, uh, that is very unfortunate. Yeah, I hope after you do this podcast, you get. So many more good penises in your life Thank that don't you. look like ET. I got a pretty good penis the other day. Hey, hey, congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. Sponsored by Reese's Pieces. <laughs> so okay, so you watched it as a kid. Mm-hmm. You can't stop falling asleep watching it as an adult. Yeah, I can't. What do you think? Is it was it just boring? Were you not connecting with it? I I I, I don't know. I'm very tired all the time, and so if a movie doesn't just capture my attention i fall asleep and it just doesn't capture my attention so i did so what doesn't capture your attention about this movie is it that hard for you to get over the weirdness of the alien <laughs> no no i don't know i i like i just i get bored really easily i like fucking wally every, anything that i don't know i think it's also yeah i guess uh like movies that are would you say that that's a children's movie that Wally or E.T. is? Uh, E.T. Um, E.T. is because <laughs> aren't there like versions where the they uh they the bad guys have guns and they CGI radios? Yes, that's over the well, gun. that's what the twentieth uh, anniversary version is, I believe. Let me look and see. Yeah, um, the twentieth anniversary version replaces the guns with walkie talkies at the very end of the movie. That's, that's annoying to me too. That's and they, <laughs> they did a lot of work because I'm looking at it right now, and they have guys with shotguns. Yeah, and they completely edited those out to make them just radios, which is really dumb. Uh, is that supposed to be because it's like supposed to be a kids movie? And I think it is supposed to be a kids movie. I guess because and that's the other thing. So like, okay, here's some other stuff that they're to talk about. This is courtesy of Wikipedia. Uh, an extended version of the film, including all three special effects, uh, premiered in March 22nd, 2002. Um, CGI was used to modify several shots, including ones of E.T. running through the opening sequence of being spotted in the cornfield. Spaceship was altered to add more lights. Um, scenes shot but for but not including the original version were introduced, including E.T. taking a bath. All right, that's creepy. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember that being in the movie. Um, Gertie telling Mary that L.A. went to the forest on Halloween, uh, which I also don't remember. Spielberg did not add the scene featuring Harrison Ford, fearing that it would reshape the film too drastically. He became more sensitive about the scene where gun wielding federal agents confront Elliot and his escaping friends and had them digitally replaced with walkie talkies. Now, people are freaking out about those walkie talkies. People are freaking people out. People freaked out about the walkie talkies because they criticized it as political correctness. <laughs> this is back in 2002. This is before the PC police have, like, <laughs> Entered and infiltrated our lifestyle as much as people are as up in up in arms about now. Well, I, well, because I feel like uh, guns have always been like one of the biggest, especially like the very conservative like PC police. Like that's always been their number one like thing. Like don't fuck with our guns. So like the fact that they replaced guns was probably like a triggering, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> thing maybe <laughs> like they're like why can't kids see guns guns are fine <laughs> why are kids allowed to have guns they're allowed to hang out with illegal aliens <laughs> have, and cart them around <laughs> in their bicycles have you seen that new the new sasha baron cohen thing where uh he gets like government officials to say that guns should or four-year-olds should be able to have guns yeah. <laughs> it's so great it's anyway. so great but that's kind of what this movie i don't think steven spielberg is like kids should have guns but even after the fact, in 2011, Steven Spielberg said, because of how much backlash this got, there are going to be no more digital enhancements or digital additions to anything based on any film I direct. I always tell people they should look at the original 1982 E.T. Um, then they should always go back to that. So even yeah. he is looking back at this new one. He's like, ah, I goofed. I fucked up. Well, good. Yeah, because that bothers me, too. But I, I feel like anything that I saw as a kid, if I didn't connect with it as a kid, then I'm just not going to like it. Because I feel like the only movies that I, that I um, can watch from, like, 
my that I saw in childhood or like movies that I liked in childhood. And so for nostalgic purposes, I still like it. But that movie, I just never, I saw it as a child. I didn't like it. And so I still don't connect with it as an adult. Because I feel like if you don't, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Because I'm sure there's people who saw, of, of course, everyone saw it as an adult and liked it. But I mean, I wouldn't say that everybody saw it as an adult. This is the first, like I said, this is the first time I'd watched E.T. again since I was a child. And I remember liking it as a kid, but I don't, again, I don't remember why I liked it. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember why. There are other movies that stuck out more to me as I was a kid that I have gone back and watched and, and they don't hold up. And some of them do. You know, yeah. like I think The Sandlot holds up as a movie. Um, I think that uh, a lot of, obviously a lot of Disney movies, like the animated ones, hold up for sure. I'm trying to think if there's any movies I saw as a kid and didn't like and then grew up and watched them and then liked it. But I don't think there is. I don't think there is because I, if I didn't like it as a kid, yeah. why watch it as an adult? I don't know. Well, I, I still like would go back and watch. I don't, I, you know what I need to go back and watch? The original Blade Runner because I remember hating that so much. But I think Did you see that as a kid? Yes, and I think that's I think it like freaked me out, and that's why I like refused to watch it. I'll forever say I hate that movie, and people don't get it, but it's because I watched it as like a young person and was like, "What the fuck is this?" Uh, wasn't there? I just remember like the a scene where like did the guy like lick the dead guy's face. I don't know. I just remember creepy shit happening in that movie. Basically, any movie where there's creepy shit going on, you're not on board. No. <laughs> I don't like it. What? Yeah, and that's not true. Well, creepy, no. But like, I like dark shit. I love Quentin Tarantino. Mm -hmm. I love dark mood, like kind of where you can put take a like a dark thing and then also put like some humor in it. Like, I think he does a really good job of that. Like, mm -hmm. I love like Django, and I love uh, pretty much anything Quentin Tarantino does. I love that. And I guess those can get creepy, right? Well, yeah, but it feels like that's kind of in the deliberate choice, yeah, to be in service of the story. Whereas, look at ET, the character design of ET, made, they could have made they him a cuter made, alien, right? They could have made him a cuter alien, but they decided to make him gross, and that bugs me. Why? I is don't that, know. Is it for children's self esteem? Like you can still be loved if you're an ugly piece of shit. I get me. <laughs> I guess. Because actually, I respect that. <laughs> Are you flipping on this movie now? Maybe. As uh, an ugly piece of shit myself. Oh, no, you're not. Um, so this movie is one of those that also has a theme park ride about it, which I don't think is actually something that I've covered for any show on the, any episode of this podcast yet. Is there an E.T. theme park There's ride? There's an E.T. theme park ride at Universal Studios in what? Florida. I oh, think they okay. used to have one at Universal Hollywood also. There's one in Universal Florida where you're riding on the bike and you basically just go through the movie of E.T. Okay. But then they have an added scene at the very end that they – just added for the ride where you go to E.T.'s home planet and you're surrounded by other versions of him and it's just this plant planet and it's really strange and it's very jarring and I wrote that as an adult and I was like, this is really creepy and unsettling because we also got stuck in that room. Oh, that's the worst, getting stuck in a ride shit. I got stuck in It's a Small World for two hours when I was a kid. Oh, no. Never rode that right again. Oh, God. Like, to the point where they turned off the music, and so you just heard, like, the robot sounds, and they were all just, like, rocking back and forth. For two hours? <laughs> yeah. Nicole. It was really bad. And maybe it wasn't two hours, and I was just a child, so it felt like two hours. But maybe. It was if it was, was two time. hours, you could have watched the entirety of E.T. during <laughs> That's true. your time in there, and still actually probably would have been creeped out more by watching E.T. than yeah, It's a probably. Small World. <laughs> so okay so is there um there's an argument that you made sort of early on that i really like and i really would like to to bring back for a sec which is that there's a lot of uh emphasis in modern times at least on nostalgia and liking things that you liked as a kid mm -hmm. or that you were quote unquote supposed to like as a kid and growing up and yeah. still going to bat for those things yeah do you think that there's a reason why certain movies become touchstones like that and become viewed as classics even though they they don't have of like objectively don't have value? Um 
Yeah, I mean, like, uh, well, I guess ET people think have value has value, but like stuff where you can. I think it's also like depending on what you can like relate to as a kid. Like, if there's something that just makes you feel better about something you're going through, like as a child, mm-hmm. like uh, div- like your parents getting divorced, or like I don't know if they're or if like I feel like a lot of young boys like those movies where there's a group of young boys being rascals or whatever right. because they can like relate to that, you know, and stuff like that. And then you grow up and you just forever love those things and. And then we get so defensive <laughs> of those movies mm-hmm. and those like things from childhood because that's the only time we were ever happy maybe. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I could see that. Like things just becoming untouchable because of nostalgia and yeah. nobody wants to say anything bad about those things that might have. I know personally this might be getting like too personal for a movie, but, but like my dad – when he was a kid went through like a really hard time. His dad was an alcoholic and he was abused and uh, like the thing that got him through like childhood was movies. Like for him to, it helped him escape reality. Uh, And so I think we get very defensive about like those things that helped us through childhood or Mm -hmm. like, um, I don't know, remind us of those times or whatever. My dad, my dad got really excited because his mom too was going through a rough time. And one of the only movies that made her laugh was Encino Man. And so when I featured for Polly Shore, he was so stoked because he was like, the only movie that ever made my mom laugh like in <laughs> those hard times was Encino Man. I mean, Encino Man is a anyway, hilarious movie. Movies are very like close to our hearts, especially when it comes to childhood. You yeah. Know? Uh, I really loved Peach Dragon as Peach a kid. Peach Dragon's a great movie. Oh, like I still watch it and cry. And like it, I think that was one of those movies for me for some reason as like a kid that helped me kind of like escape reality and stuff. What I love th- that movie. What was it about Peach Dragon that spoke to you? Uh, well, first of all, the dragon wasn't creepy at all. It was adorable. It was right? adorable. And uh, I little don't, floppy purple hair. I don't know what was that song. I always cry during that song that she sings, and I forget what it's called. I'm but gonna look it up right now. It's so beautiful, and every time she sings it, I cry. Uh, something. Oh, I'll be your candle underwater. Yeah, candle oh underwater. God. Oh my god! Received an Academy Award nomination. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, that movie's great. Also, I just love. Uh, I was also like obsessed with the Main Street Electrical Parade at Disneyland, and that was my favorite part of it when Peach Dragon would come out. The Main Street Electrical Parade is it's really great. So great, it's so good. I used speaking to speaking of nostalgia. Yeah, I went to the because they took it away from Disneyland. I think they brought it back. Like they bring recently, it back every once in a while, but they had it in Florida, and I hadn't seen it in forever. And I went to Florida like maybe five or six years ago and saw it. And I like just started bawling because I was like, Oh my God, my grandma would take me to see it when I was a kid. And it was just, yeah. Nostalgia is a powerful thing, man. That's the, you know, what's interesting about ET is having talked about it at length with mm-hmm. you is there's, there's kind of nothing to be as a kid watching this movie to like watch and cling to the way yeah. that it is for other movies. I, that, and I think that's probably why I don't remember a whole lot about the movie. Right. Until that's the thing, now. too. I don't think it's very memorable. It's not a, It's not really All a... All I remembered was the the scene with the the bike. Yeah. That's the, that's the shot, yeah. you know? And, and that's a beautiful shot. It's a beautiful scene, right? Yeah. But the, other than that... The movie's what, not about, like, accepting people that are different than you, really, or, like... It doesn't have a. It doesn't really have a moral to it in the way that like another that other kids movies or movies that you would watch as a kid do. Yeah, I didn't have any emotional connection to it, like it, at all. It kind of feels like a, a movie about kids made for adults to watch. Mm. Like a movie that this is this is a movie that I feel like it's probably a lot of parents probably because it got a PG rating. A lot of parents probably saw an ad for this movie and then they took their kids to the theater thinking like, okay, this is a movie with kids in it and the kids will be like, yay, children. And then the parents probably walked out getting more out of the movie than the kids did. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like maybe the 
the biggest thing of why it bores me or whatever is, I, I, yeah, I don't feel that emotional connection to it. And some people do, mm-hmm. like when the alien's dying or whatever, I felt nothing. Yeah. Um, but like, I just, I think that's what helps me escape is when I, something sucks me in like emotionally or something I relate to or something like that. And uh, that's what I like about a movie, I think. <clears throat> And E.T. just didn't do that for me. Because he's a creepy little penis Because he's just creepy. And I was like, uh, I like, but f- like sit from the beginning, I wanted him to die. And then he, <laughs> <laughs> and then he got sick. And then I was like, yes. And Andy's gross now. So please die. And it's just like, I had no, uh, the, yeah, the character. I didn't, I didn't care about it. <laughs> so you wanted E.T. to be a snuff film the whole time. <laughs> that would have, I, that might have made it better. Yeah. <laughs> That was going to be my next question is what would make this movie better. But now that we have that answer. Uh, Kill E.T. What is a movie that you would recommend instead of E.T.? Is there a recent favor that you've seen or or something else besides, you know, Pete Dra- Pete's Dragon, great movie. That is great. Wait, does it have to be similar to E.T. or just something? It doesn't have I... to be. It can be. Uh, wow. Um, you know, Men in Black, that's got an alien in it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> You know what? I recently, if you're looking for like a kind of like a movie about kids, I did recently see Eighth Grade, which I'm sure has been brought up on this podcast it actually, already. Actually, uh, really has not been brought really? up that much. It's a great movie. Jay, I just saw it recently. Uh, me and uh, my friend Tom Goss went and saw Love it. Tom. And I was straight up bawling, like bawling my eyes out because. I think any that is something where I had an emotional connection because mm-hmm. I too was an eighth grade girl. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I think even if you weren't, because uh, you were never an eighth grade girl. I was an eighth grade girl, but I saw that but movie and felt a very we strong all, emotional connection to it. Middle school is like one of those insecure times of your mm-hmm. fucking life. I'm. I think most people would agree. Yeah, because you're going through so many like changes and like. Everyone is just oh God. I that movie made me feel like the, the whole time. <laughs> the worst I've ever felt as a human being until like realistically, like the past couple of years, is more is more turmoil and like other shit just kind of flows into your life as you grow up. Yeah, was middle school. Yeah, like seventh and eighth grade was gnarly. It's such a. It's I don't know. I can't really pinpoint why, but it's like a very jarring time in your life. It's a very it, like you're not ready for it when mm-hmm. it comes. And uh, I and it made me feel because I have an 11 year old sister right now who's about to go into sixth grade, and I'm just like, I can't even imagine. Like I'm like, oh my god, please be okay. And uh, I know she will be because we're all okay. We you are know? all okay. You should take her to go see eighth grade though. I wanted to. I was going to, and then I saw the part. The only part like I wouldn't. It's rated R, right? Yeah. Which I don't I don't really understand why it was rated R. Because language. Language. Yeah. I yeah. Because they say that I don't care. I I say worse things in front of my sister. But um I know one of your my favorite bits of yours is you talking about (laughs) calling somebody a cunt in front of your sister. Yeah. Um which totally bombed at your show, but I'm gonna keep doing it. Uh (laughs) I don't care. But yeah, like the uh the I the part with the uh the blowjob thing. I don't even think she knows what that is yet. And if she does, I don't wanna know. Right. <laughs> um and so like when, you know, like the the kid asks her if she gives blowjobs and then she like looks up how to give a blow which I think I did too. Maybe later. I was a late bloomer, so I think I might have looked that up in like high school. But <laughs> But yeah, she like YouTube's like how to give a good blow job and then like she tries to do it on the banana and, and then, then her, her dad, dad walks like, in. He's like, like bananas. I that was, took that a was such a funny scene. But like I don't know if I'm like I wanna take her to see that just because uh I don't wouldn't want to answer questions. <laughs> right. But um if I I also have a little sister, but not not as young as your sister. But if I remember if if eighth grade was around when I was at that age when I could take my sister to a movie like that, mm-hmm. I would take her and I, and I don't know how many of you listening have anybody like this, but just for that scene in the car where she's with the boy yes. who tries to make a move and she stands up to him. Yeah. God, that movie, that, that's the, that scene is that, that's the scene that turns the movie from a very good movie into a it great movie. It made my movie. heart race. Like mm-hmm. when you realize what's happening, yeah. you're like, no, 
No. I was so afraid of that of that scene going such a different yes. direction than it did. Well, because can I tell you, when I was in seventh grade, I was asked out by a 16-year-old boy mm-hmm. who was in high school. He was like my friend's neighbor. And um, I didn't realize how weird that was <laughs> at the time. And like me and all my friends had like a crush on him and he asked me out. And then like I got freaked out and he kept calling me. Uh, Cause I said, yes, I said like it'd be his girlfriend. And then like, he kept like calling me and I wouldn't answer. Cause I was like freaked out. I didn't know what, what, to, what to do with boys. I like <laughs> just like, I wasn't even allowed to date yet. My dad wouldn't let me date till I was 16. And uh, so then uh, I just told, cause my, the, my friend that was his neighbor was like, Kyle wants to know like why you're not like talking to him or calling back. I was like, can you just tell him I don't want to date? Like whatever. And then I remember like the next week because I had a friend who was jealous because she had a crush on him too and the next week that friend she was never nice to me she came up to me and she was like Kyle fingered me in the bowl and I was like I don't even know what that means yet <laughs> but like she told me that yeah like this guy like fingered her and like uh now looking back I feel bad for her because I know that was probably her being taken advantage of. And like, I know that she probably was very insecure and had right. a lot going on and stuff. And like, that makes me so sad. But then I remember also like they together, like started dating and started co- like prank calling me and telling me I was a slut and stuff, which I had never even kissed a boy. So whatever, but it made me very sad. And anyway, yeah, like middle school so hard. Middle school's rough, isn't it guys? <laughs> it's real rough. Uh, but that movie captured it so well like all the feelings just like the part where she's looking out at like all the kids at the pool and she's in like her one piece like and like the music playing when she just looks out the window and sees all the like it just like it ca- just everything and captured just the feeling of like insecurity and just wanting to crawl into a hole like <laughs> i don't know i just uh it's a great movie. And the girl even looks like my little sister, kind of. So it just like made me cry so much. Oh, know. man. Yeah, go take her to see that movie. Sure. Um, don't don't make her watch E.T. It's, look, maybe she, <laughs> maybe she probably won't like it just as much as you didn't like it. But it's okay. Yeah, probably not. Uh, she's, uh, I don't know what she likes to watch. I should probably know that. She, she still likes like cartoons, I think. Uh, but I wonder if her... I don't know, whatever. But she'd probably be, she'd probably be okay. She probably should know that stuff, I guess. I mean, she's about to be, that's what I remember about going into middle school. It's like, it's from fifth grade to sixth grade. You're like thrown into like all these kids like cursing and like Mm -hmm. saying like, hey, do you know what a fucking queef is? That was one of the things I remember. I didn't know what it was and all my friends laughed at me. Yeah. I mean, Um, I'd like back to E.T. I didn't remember Elliot calling his brother penis breath. No, that... See, and that I was, was like, my see, that was the only part insult. I liked. That was the only part I liked because that's a good part. That <laughs> is a good it's part. Fu- that's, that's funny. I legit. I mean, that's why the mom laughed because I, I I don't know how genuine that reaction was or whether or not <laughs> that was a directorial choice. But oh man, penis is a funny word. And it's, penis is also something that ET looks like. Yes, <laughs> based but on like, the cold experience. Of to penises. me, like penis is so much funnier than any other word you could say for penis, and it's like the correct term, but it's funny, and I don't know why. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, hey, <laughs> thanks for coming on today, Nicole. You're welcome. I thought I'd be so bad at this podcast, no, and you're I probably quite good was. At it. Thank you. You talked about why you didn't like the movie, and that's what you're here for. Yay. Um, where can the listeners find you on the internet? I know, um, at least by the time this is out, that your uh, your roast battle with uh, Joe Urell yes. is on the interwebs It somewhere. will be. Yeah. I don't know. It hasn't been released yet. Right. This is coming out uh, in a little while. So it, it'll, it'll be out by then. Okay, cool. Yeah. ComedyCentral.com. Check out my roast battle against Joe Urell. Um, it was one of the most fun things I've ever done so far. Great fight. Um, great battle. Yeah. And I definitely will have some – I have a bunch of like dates in September, October coming up. So just follow me on social media. And I'll be posting about it at Nicole Buchanan on Twitter, uh, B-E-C-A-N-N-O-N, and at Nicole underscore Buchanan on Instagram. Sweet. You can follow me on the internet at Diet J on Twitter and Instagram, jlightcomedy.com for show dates. And please leave a rating on iTunes for this podcast. Just, you know, please do it. We got so many podcasts that I'm still trying to beat in the, in the TV and film section. 
And I believe I'm going to do it one day, Nicole. But Yeah, I believe in you. I just want to be ahead of uh, the latest uh, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race recap. That show's not even, as of recording, not even on right now. <laughs> what is there to recap? What do they talk about? What are you talking about? <laughs> You're talking about the show you saw at Hamburger Mary's? Come on. Get your shit together, guys. <laughs> um, folks, this has been another episode of Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. Okay.